Solomon's President Roberts list. No dark still ignorant though. No ingot. Coward. It takes it takes a brave man to play Dark Soul and get in this deck. <laughs> Let alone the Azorius key room. So Snook just a couple of Temple Gardens to begin things here. Setter just gonna play a land and pass the turn back. Let's see if Snook actually has a creature to play. It is a Lox on the Smiter, so there will be no countering of that. Yep. One of the rare times where Smiter might have a, a real text box. Yeah. I Usually would agree. just gets Ascension Sphere to Banishing Light in this matchup, but here, I guess the Punter Cleansing build may do something. In for four. How about a wah, special wah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke too soon. You certainly did. And Cedar did win our standard open last time we were in Philly last year. So I'll see. Is it maybe a divination, perhaps? And it is. Two cards coming here for Robert. Does he have a fourth land to play? He does. It's a Temple of Deceit. The divination on the empty board oh. and then play the scry land is just like... That is perfect. And your opponent has no advent of the worm. It's a dream come true. This isn't a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. The elevator is going up. So let's take a look at the top couple of cards here for Snook. Now, this is another card that might be a little more challenging for Robin's build to handle. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you would like to just answer pretty easily with a Detention Spear or a Banishing Light can be a little harder in this matchup. The voice of research is the card that goes to Snook's hand. So going to try to use a little bit of a Planeswalker advantage to get back into this game. Again, Snook did take a mulligan down to five. Cedar just going to play an island before passing the turn back over to Snook. So now Snook wants to start his turn. Is it a Johnny going up in some fashion? Or will it be a voice of resurgence? I think I like starting off the turn here by going up. Work with some better information on what you want to play. Might find something better to do with your mana also. Yeah. One thing you can't find, of course, is Advent of the Worm. That one cannot be added to the hand. Might be the best card in this situation. I guess it's fairly safe to lead with voice as well. Just try to force the action on Robert. Maybe it'll give you a little more information what you would want to take with the Johnny. It's certainly possible. Snook says, all right, let me start by going up. Get some information here. Take a look at the top four cards. Soldier of the Pantheon among them. And it looks like maybe Fleece Main Line will be the choice, and it will. So that's going to go to the hand. The rest are going to go to the bottom. Is Johnny making its way up here? Yeah, another card that gets better against the Plunder Cleansing builds. True. Fleecy might do something. Wouldn't rule it out. Experiment one. In a voice of resurgence. Evolution. How about a syncopate instead? And this is a really good sign for Adam. That means that Plunder Cleansing not at the ready next turn for Robert more than likely. Yeah, because Clanner Punching would be an absolute disaster. It would yeah. include all the creatures and the Ajani. Exactly. So if you have your opponent on the Planner Cleansing build right now, you're probably feeling pretty good about things. Robert gonna draw a card now after syncopating that voice of resurgence. There's a Supreme Bird to clear those creatures away. Does he have a land? He does. It's a Temple of Silence. Take a look at the top card here, Will Cedar. That card's gonna go to the bottom. So Snook will take a draw here. Again, he does have plenty of ammo. It's just going to get it to stay. Four cards here. Looks like maybe Smiter is the best choice. As he ends up putting a lot of a... Uh, this is the second half of the worm that he's looked at that he's going to put on the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's also a pull of Kronos that he's putting on the bottom as well. It's green, white, bill is a little bit unorthodox. Not as low to the ground as we've seen most of them. Very more mid rangey I mean, going all the way up to a Johnny is pretty rare. Yeah. Here's a voice, and there's a Bramaz. So Temple of Silence is going to untap here. We'll see if Robert does have a Planner Cleansing or draws one for the turn. He does have a lot of cards in his hand. Now, he was missing Triple White last turn, so it's still a possibility here. Mm -hmm. Does have Triple White now. Did that Temple of Silence he played last turn. But basically what Green White's going to do is just keep presenting wave after wave after wave, and hopefully Robert runs out of ways to stop all the waves. And then Shaq Johnny gives him a ton of staying power. Yeah. It's still going to all be undone by uh, Strings of Revelation or Planar Cleansing, of course. But if Robert has any intent on trading one for one in this game, Adam's going to be able to keep his head above water. Plus, Snook could go, could go to 120. Right. Have you considered that in your equation? I have not, because he definitely loses the game if he does that with his Johnny. Ah, yes. <laughs> Perhaps the Sphinx's Revelation in the main phase, but we'll see. And that's what we do see, thanks to Voice of Resurgence. So four cards and four life coming to Robert. He's going to go up a little bit here. And you saw him pick up a copy of Planner Cleansing. That might be the most important one. 
probably just an issue of getting out of this turn without too much disaster happening. Yep. Snook, going to take a draw. Card like group one defenses would be great right now, but that's not a main deck card in green white decks nowadays. The big question is, is does he have planner cleansing on his radar? Last time we were in this area, Jim Davis making the top four with planner cleansing blue white, putting that deck on the map. So is that what Snook has on his radar right now? Or is he just thinking maybe my opponent just has not found copies of Detention Sphere? It's a that's a pretty tough, pretty tough assumption to make at this point. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be pretty comfortable assuming he was on a Planner Cleansing build. The Giant is going to spread around some counters. Going to make Voice and Bermaz a little bit bigger. Here's a bunch of mana. It's going to be probably a Boon Seder, you have to imagine. Maybe not, though. Does have three copies of that in his deck. This would be a good spot for Boon Seder for sure. Yeah. So here's your attack, your trigger with Bermaz. So there'll be a Cat Soldier. And now we're going to put Boon Seder on the Soldier. Spreading out the diversity of threats right yeah. now. Yep. Good to do if you're worried about Jace potentially. Get yep. the best spread possible. An attack for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen points of damage. That is a lot. It's a big swing, but Robert's got a lot of light to play with. And if Planter Cleansing is at the ready here. I mean, Cleansing is kind of interesting in this situation, right? Because it's going to take up Robert's entire turn. And yes, it's going to kill some things, but it's also, you know, going to leave behind some stuff as well. So I think that actually makes things a little bit interesting here. And there is the cleansing. Well, it's just the voice token that gets left behind in all of this, right? Yeah, I think the, uh, the Boon is going to die. Yeah, this is not like a, a Supreme Verdict. This is everything. Yeah. And so now the only thing that's going to be left over is a voice token. So in the house. Let's see if Snook can rebuild here. Adam's nearly out of resources altogether, so... Oh, well, the mighty soldier of the Pantheon has something to say about that. And so as he locks on Spider, here is an Azorius Charm to put a halt to that attack. So there goes the elemental token. And it's now Snook out of cards with just two creatures on the table, hoping it's going to be good enough, hoping Robert does not have another mass removal effect. Or anything at all. That as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a lot of spells he can beat from this spot. This turn reeks of a Sphinx Revelation. You see Robert get from the bring it on attack. With the hand motion. Let's see what we have here. Uh-oh. A quicken, huh? Take a draw. The time for a supreme verdict. And Zorius Charm is going to take care of that smiter temporarily. And Snook says, I will gain one with my soldier. Thank you. The oftentimes missed trigger of Soldier of the Pantheon. I think Adam missed it the first time around, which still puts him at a better batting average than... My success rate with Soldier of Pantheon against blue white control decks. Likewise. It's hard to remember when it doesn't matter. Celestial Charm going to show up to the party here. 2 2. The Vigilant Knight token here. Snook will take a draw. This is an attack for four. Robert's going to go down to five. I think that Snook just has to play the Smiter, but he's not going to, and I'm not entirely sure it's going to matter. Yes. He will get his soldier trigger. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan there of just casting the smiter. It doesn't make a huge difference, I, I don't think, in the way this game plays out. But you can only win the game if Robert has nothing, and you're not even presenting lethal next turn. At the end of combat there, Robert was at five. Mm -hmm. So the board you have doesn't even threaten lethal the next turn. Yep. And you can't beat almost any spell out of Robert's deck at this point. So yep. just cast your stuff. Yeah, trying to pace things at this point, that, that, that kind of game is over. That's all yeah, you have. You have to, I think you have to play your smiter and, and actually just cross your fingers and hope, all right, it, with any luck, Robert is somehow on E and doesn't have a rev, or his rev just bricks entirely. Or his hands counterspells and your smiter resolves, so you yeah. can't do anything about yeah. it. You know, there's the, that possibility is there, too. The window isn't large, but you got to give yourself the best opportunity. Yeah. There is a last breath. We also saw Jace tick up. Robert playing a Muta Vault for his land for the turn. Going to discard a planes before passing the turn back. Will our former standard open champion from last year. Now plusing Jace is the lock here. The, the token can't attack into the Muta Vault. Robert with a lot of action in his hand. Snook going to play a Fleece Main Lion. That's going to get dissolved. Robert, it felt like was going to counter anything he could counter there. Yeah, I think he just wants to scry, and he knows the last card is a smiter, so he's not worried about having to play around anything. Yep. 
He left the top card on top of his deck, so we're going to find out what that is in just a moment as he does untap that whole mass of lands. Looks like it may have been a revelation. This could be an Elspeth here. And it is the Sun's champion. The one-two puncher, Jason Elspeth, are in play. Going to minus this to take care of the smiter. Going to plus the Jace. Again, the plusing of Jace invalidates that knight token due to Mutafault being there. Temple of Enlightenment will take a look at the top card. I'm not sure why the minus there probably respects the possibility of Brave the Elements, I would imagine. Yeah, that, maybe Slezia Charm, Charm is something you're scared of. Slezia Charm is reasonable as well. Snook draws a card and he says, all right, you've got me beat with your two Planeswalkers, and he will pick it up and pack it in. Robert Cedar does win game number one over Adam Snook. Blue Eye Control up a game over Green White Aggro. Pretty tough to, to win when you when you mulligan it. Johnny sort of gave Adam the sense of being able to stay in the game, but Revelation is just worth too many cards. We'll take a look at the sideboards here. I've got Snook in front of me. These four copies of Miscutter Hydra are most certainly coming in, so I expect to see those in just a moment, along with two Banishing Lights, actually four of them, along with two copies of Gift of Orzova, two Glare of Heresy, two Last Breath, and a God's Willing. So, actually, yeah, excuse me, two Banishing Light and two Banishing, Banisher Priest. Uh, either way, those cards aren't coming in. Yeah. I, I don't imagine. I don't think you can really bring in the Banishing lights against the planar cleansing build yeah he does have planeswalkers and all that kind of stuff but i think you just sort of have to try to dance with those things trying to to kill them with banishing light when everything gets swept away is seems really bad to me it's very easy for me to say that glare of heresy is not going to come in here but again i guess since snook did see planar cleansing it's going to go it's not going to come in yeah because planar cleansing the, the you know the card was revealed now there are some builds of blue white control that do play uh, detention sphere in the sideboard uh harry corvasi uh, and uh, Frank Scarron are big fans of that strategy. So we'll see if that's what Robert has. Well, I, I don't mind the Glare of Heresy that much at all in this matchup because you know your opponent has Elspeth. Okay. There's the possibility that they brought in the spheres that you've alluded to. Okay. There's a possibility they're bringing in Archangels. That's not an uncommon plan. Yep. So I think you know for sure there's something you can get, and it's possible they're sideboarding in more stuff. I think the Banishing Lights are, are too poor because they stay in play. They're so bad against Planar Cleansing. But I think one glare of here, uh, uh, one or two glare of heresies are, are very reasonable use of sideboard slots here. On the other side here, Robert sideboard three copies of Detention Sphere, two negates, two last breaths, two fiend slayer paladins, a Jace memory adept, a reprisal, a gainsay, a celestial player, and a rapid hybridization. I think that the Detention Spheres are going to be coming in in this matchup. Uh, it's tough to know for certain because Planar Cleansing is so good against Adam's deck. But I think Detention Sphere is a reasonable card to bring in here. A lot of of course, you know, Locks on Spider, Fleece Bane, Lion type permanents, he wants to answer that way. I think the Reprisal is very well suited for this matchup. Kills Locks on Spider and is a good answer to Miss Cutter Hydra in most circumstances. And other than that, I'm not a huge fan of, of the rest of the cards on the sideboard here. I guess the two last breaths are pretty good against Voice of Resurgence, but it's a pretty narrow removal spell. I think the last breath will probably come in as well. Yeah, I expect to see him come in just because Voice is so good against this time. Yeah, I think that alone makes you want to board that card in. Well, voice is a lot less effective against the planar cleansing builds of the deck. This I is like. true. I mean, that one, this this version taps out more on its own turn. Yeah, I think probably still better than other stuff that's going on on the sideboard. The counter spells, for example, are really poor in this matchup to begin with, and then become especially so when you know your opponent's bringing a miscard hydra. So there's some easy cuts to make in the matchup. Players are finishing shuffling. We'll be underway in just a moment. We do want to talk about very briefly the newest addition to our Creature Collection series, Acorn Mystic. It's here. June 13th is past. We're in July somehow. But you can get a play mat. You can get a deck box. You can get a dice bag. You can get sleeves. And, of course, two Acorn Mystics for anyone who joins Legacy Open, including tomorrow. And two chubby, furry cheeks. Let's not forget about those. Let's not forget about those. Those are not those, optional. Those come standard. Yeah. They don't cost extra. This Animal series, uh, the, the Creature Collection... Token series has been incredibly popular. Uh, not just the tokens themselves, the play mats, the sleeves, all that stuff. We see them all around the open series. Yep. So this is the, the newest one. And soon enough, uh, you know, the panda action will be up and rolling. And... and you had better believe that we will have a conversation about hippos. Yeah. And other animals in our contract I'm looking for the so I'm looking for the most dangerous game token series coming out soon. Oh, interesting. Just You've more, not pitched this idea to me yet. Yeah. More hippos and sharks. And... Ooh, sharks are good. Yeah. More blood on the things, maybe? Maybe not. Like, really animatronic and cartoony still, but just more violent. Okay. That's the, sort of the style I'm looking for. Yeah, for sure. There's a reason I'm not in the art department over at Star City Games. Yeah. But yeah. I do like this quite a bit. That's another conversation entirely. Well, we should renegotiate that when next year rolls around. <laughs> An experiment one to start here for Snook. 
And let's see if he's got white mana on turn two to actually pump this thing up. This is sort of the problem with the green-white deck is it just does not have great mana. It's tough. You need one of your dual lands, I think, to have a functional draw most of the time. It looks like Slick does have a Temple Garden. He also has a Temple of Plenty. He's going to take two and go down to 18 for an untapped Temple Garden. You it's have to imagine a creature's coming down here. And it's not just about having, you know, one of each color mana. I mean, this deck is playing Bermaz and Bow of Nylea mm -hmm. and Boon Sater. Yep. So it's really stretched all over the place. Soldier of Pantheon comes down. Evolution, excuse me, Experiment 1 evolves into a 2 2. And Attack for 2 will put Robert down to 18. You saw Robert lead off of the Zorius Guildgate. Now he has an island. And we'll see if he has some sort of play on turn number two here. T Rex sleeves, where the T Rex can't shuffle their deck, is trying to shuffle a deck but can't because its arms are too short. That one's for free. That, that, <laughs> that one's on the house. No royalties on I'm that one. I'm not even charging you for no. that one. Liz, get to work. <laughs> here is a Temple of Plenty. Top card looks like it may stay on top here. As Snook does consult his hand, and he does opt to leave it on top. Here comes the Soldier of the Pantheon. Robert going to go down to 16. Does Snook have a follow play? He does not. That doesn't mean he won't have anything to do the entire turn because the Celestial Charm mana is available here. Looks like there's a lot of threes in his hand. Mm -hmm. For Maz and Spider, I, I, if uh, my vision serves. Set are just going to play a mute all before passing the turn back over here. You also do see an half another worm there in Snook's hand. Some good action. Here's an attack for two. That's a last breath. So bye bye, soldier. Snook with the follow up. There's a voice of resurgence. That's a good one to have right now as it doesn't die to last breath. Two mana. Okay, yes, it does. And there's a God's Willing. Okay. Got a little something going now. A little fighting snook. I like that. This is the first moment of the match where it feels like Adam's kind of broken serve on the pace of the game. Yeah, it took him a, it took him a little while. He's out in front now. Now he just needs to press his advantage. That's the key. And he found a fourth land here. And again, he does have his hand right now, Advent of the Worm, Bermaz, and Mist Cutter Hydra. So how does he want to pace things here? He can play Mist Cutter and get in some hasty beats. He can play Bermaz. I actually kind of like the idea of playing Bermaz here because it forces his opponent to have a Supreme Verdict basically next turn. I like the Bermaz here a lot because the other two cards in his hand continue to be powerful as the game progresses. Bermaz has a very specific shelf life. It's probably now or never. Yep. So he gets to keep his more powerful resources in reserve and try to get some action out of Bermaz here while he still can. And that's a detention sphere. And that came in from the sideboard, Yep, as we know. So that's going to take care of Bermaz. Looks like Snook may have picked up a copy of Mutaval, just one in his deck list. It's hard for this deck to fit even the first copy in because the colored mana issues are so pronounced. Yeah, it looks pretty good right now. And we could see a Miscutter Hydra come down here, or it still might be time for Advent of the Worm. They pull the game. Those two cards pull the game in two completely different directions. Absolutely. That's what makes the situation a little bit tough here, but he is going to go Miscutting. It's one of those spots where, you know, you, you like to kind of keep the Miscutter Hydra in reserve for when your opponent has Counterspell mana up. Mm -hmm. But it's awkward for him to pass and then try to Avon at the end of the turn because then he starts playing into Counterspells that way. Yep. So just put Robert to the test. He has to have untapped white mana and Supreme Verdict right now for the game to remain competitive. Yep. And even if he does have it, you still have Advent left over after it's all said and done. You also have an Elemental Token from Voice and a Mutavault among your yeah. lands, so you're still doing all right. Here is a fourth copy of Last Breath. Snook is gaining all that life. Doesn't even need to go ultimate with Ajani this game. He's no. already got all the life. Gonna fire at Mutavault now, I imagine. And so this attack is gonna put this attack is gonna put Robert down to two. So now if Robert actually does have a Supreme Verdict, he just dies to the Mutavault. Yeah. And now here's a copy of Fleece Bane Lion. And Adam knows this too. He says, yeah, you have a Plains and a Supreme Verdict, that's fine. I still kill you, kill you with Mutavault. So yep. I don't mind adding the Fleece Bane Lion to the table in this spot. The one of Mutavaults is probably going to be the one that wraps it up. And Adam Slick is going to win at game number two here. Green on aggro and blue on control are moving to a third one. And just checking the land count in Robert's list here, uh, 27. Magic with a Quicken and wow. several copies of Azorius Charm and Divination. So this is a person who's taking hitting their land traps very seriously. Just didn't catch it that game. The temple count, let's see, there are four temple of enlightenment. Eight. Look at their eight, yeah. 
It's rare to see. I mean, that's one of the ways that Blue Light Control actually loses is just having mana issues. It's so rare to see, but it's one of the few ways that they lose. It is a, they need to make their first four land drops. If they stop anywhere in between before they get to turn four, it's very hard for them to win against most draws. So we'll see if Robert's able to actually, you know, cobble together some lands in the next, the next game here. Because I do think the matchup is probably pretty favorable for him. I think it so. It feels that way. Without a card like Reborn Defenses and Adam's sideboard, he doesn't have a lot of ways to kind of fight against the cards of Brainbird. He has Boon Sitter, Mystic Hydra, and Advent of the Worm, which gives him some amount of play against those cards in certain scenarios. But uh, he doesn't have a card that lines up d great directly one-on-one -on -one against Supreme Verdict. And that's just going to make the matchup pretty hard for him to play. Well, players are going to finish shuffling up here, and we'll probably watch a rather entertaining game number three. But what's what's this Open Series all about? What's about the Players' Championship now? Mm -hmm. We've already got four players who've qualified for it. Season one, we saw BBD and Derek Sheets win. And they qualified when we were in Charlotte. Uh, Brian, a pretty commanding lead most of 2014. He did have to overtake the lead that William Jensen built up through 2013. Uh, but BBD had a pretty comfortable lead going into that weekend. Not a lot of drama leading up to that. Yeah. Lots of the first invite. You want to talk about comfortable leads. That's what CVM had yes. going into the Season 2 Invitational. He had that baby locked up before the Invitational even began. So congratulations to him and the Season 2 Invitational winner, Tom Ross. Him winning with Boss Slide, having the sweet Infect token. I mean, these four players, we got to find 12 more to compete for $50,000, man. Yeah, guaranteed money for all competitors and $20,000 for first prize, as you mentioned. Uh, travel only accommodation covered by Star City. This is a really juicy event, and you can qualify. It's as simple as going and winning an IQ. You can get here yourself. So okay. uh, make sure to check out all the events that Star City has to offer in your area. You want to qualify for an invitational? And then if you're able to spike that bad boy as Derek Sheets did, we'll see you at the end of the year in Roanoke. Yep. And I am looking forward to it. December 20th and 21st in Roanoke. You, me, Matthias Hunt, we'll be covering all the action of those 16 players doing battle. It's going to be, it's going to be something. It's going to be awesome, and it's going to be cold. It will be cold. It's definitely going to be cold. It will be cold. Robert Sitter going to take a look at the opening hand. He has the option to play first. He's going to take a mulligan. Snook is happy, so he will keep. You have to imagine that Adam has the necessary colors of mana to operate. That's the, that's the starting point for this deck. Because your draws are time sensitive, too. It's one of those things where, you know, let's say blue white control, you're missing double white for a while, but then you finally draw your second white mana. Now you cast Supreme Verdict, and everything's fine. Yeah. A deck with a bunch of two ones and three threes, the same thing is not true. You need to cast yourself on time. So green white has to be very aggressive about how it mulligans. And Blue White is a deck that does Mulligan relatively well, all yes. things considered. 27 lands, a lot of cyclers, three copies of Divination, and just a lot of raw power, too. Eight temples, of course. It can find what it's looking for. This much we know. It looks at a lot of cards and has a lot of powerful cards to find. A Hollow Fountain to start things off. Here is a Plains along with a Soldier of the Pantheon. A Muta Vault here, and there is a Last Breath. So, especially when you see a God's Willing, you're going to fire those off in the main phase every time you have the chance. Has to now, yeah. We saw him play a little conservatively with the Last Breath last time against Soldier of the Pantheon uh, because uh, Adam can't save it with a pump spell, so Robert was willing to allow no attack. Mm -hmm. But now that he's seen God's Willing, as you mentioned, he just has to main phase his removal more than he did in game two. And there's a D Sphere to take care of the Voice Resurgence. So just exchange your removal here. And this is kind of how Blue It wants to play. Hit your lands, exchange removal, play Jace, play Divination, play Sphinx's Revelation to draw cards. So here's a Banish Land to take care of the Detention Sphere. I wonder if those came in in the sideboarding for game number three. Wouldn't surprise me. He has a lot of cards that are, you know, he can easily take out here. The yeah. one copy of Bow of Nylea, the two copies of Banishing Priest, the, the Celestia Charms are not great here. He has mm -hmm. cards to take out. Three mana. And I actually don't like this pacing very much for blue-white control. I feel like you want to use, you basically want to Supreme Verdict on four and then use these Last Breath and Banishing Lights Detention Spheres to sweep up what's left over after the fact. Uh, pacing the game this way takes a lot of sting out of Robert's sweepers. Forces him much more to play towards something like Elspeth. Divination plus Temple of Deceit was Robert's turn. Here's a Temple of Plenty from Snook, so he'll take a look at the top card. That one's going to go towards the bottom, so not what Snook was looking for. We know that two damage is going to come across with the Voice of Resurgence, and there that is. The question is, what will the follow-up be? Because you have to imagine there will be one. It's the Soldier of the Pantheon just past the turn back here. Will Snook over to Cedar. And we'll take a draw. 
four mana. Feels like a verdict. It's going to be a Jace, actually. You saw Snook was ready to, to let his creatures go away. And this is part of the problem with leaning too heavily on Voice of Resurgence post-board is or even game one, for that matter, is Jace and Elspeth are very powerful. Of course, the counter spells, those get much worse in the face of that card. Some of the sweepers do as well, but the Planeswalkers are very powerful against Voice of Resurgence. Let's see what Snook has here. Now that he has five mana, that opens up quite a few things. A large Miscutter Hydra, Johnny, which we saw in the first game, just a one of, is the Mentor of Heroes. There's also Boon Seder as well. He's going to tap five mana right now. And this is a Johnny. So the elevator, of course, is going up on the Mentor of Heroes. The question is, are we looking at cards? Are we distributing counters? And it looks like we're distributing counters. So an attack here. We'll take down Jace. A good turn there for Snook, all things considered. Very good turn. The thing to be a little bit scared of right now is, of course, Planner Cleansing. But there's really nothing you can do about that. You just kind of have to hope your opponent doesn't have it. And not only does, does Robert need to have an untapped land, but he needs to have a third white mana as well. So yep. it's tough for him to be able to do it this turn. And also, when you're playing against blue-white control, if you're playing around one thing, you're usually losing to something else. Mm -hmm. So my opinion, it's generally best to just play the best way that your hand allows you to play your game and sort of ignore what's going on on the other side of the table. Because there's just too many elements of attack for, that blue-white control has access to. Oh, Robert is certainly giving his turn a lot of thought right now about what to do. You know, his life total is relatively high. He's at 18, but a Johnny certainly changes some things. It makes everything very threatening. It means the card advantage game is much harder for Robert to play. There's three mana being tapped. We'll see if maybe this is a detention sphere. There is no white mana in there, so it looks like it might just be a divination-esque effect. What does the standard open champion from Philadelphia last year have to play this turn? This is five mana now. Maybe a supreme verdict, not at its best in the situation, but it's better than nothing. Johnny just gives him such a good refire here. Yep. He has the option of either finding more gas or just turning his token into a 4-4 plus maybe some other creatures in his hand. Plus one life from the Soldier of the Pantheon and plus one elemental token in just a moment. Here's Mutavolt. And we're going to go after a Johnny here. All right, trying to make some inroads. Yeah. That's the best that Robert can do. He's tapped out. Shields are down. And it's time for Snook to try to make a move. Snook's hand is pretty land heavy at this point. And it does force some action. You know, if, if Adam doesn't have any blockers back next turn, those two Mutavolts finish off a Johnny. Mm -hmm. So it, that is a meaningful uh, two loyalties are removed from a Johnny in that spot. Snook taking a look at the top four cards. Going to consult his hand here. Looks like he does have some options from this Ajani activation. Pretty hard to miss with the Mentor of Heroes in his deck. So many creatures. And he will take a Voice of Resurgence. So the rest are going to go to the bottom. Going to play a Soldier of the Pantheon. Follow this up with that voice. There's a land. Here's an attack for three. Robert going to go down to 15. And we'll see what he wants to do on his turn as he takes a draw. This would be a really good spot for Elspeth. Or Planar Cleansing. Yep. Still needs that third white mana. He is missing that right now. But Elspeth would certainly be good right now. So I mentioned, you know, you can only slow play so much against blue-white. Yep. It's not just about beating... Supreme Verdict and, and so forth, but you got to be Revelation and the Planeswalkers as well. Now, this is a game where Revelation does not feel very threatening because there's a voice on the table and there's an Ajani over there as well. So if, if Setter wanted to Revelate, he probably, I mean, he'd just do it on his own turn. That would yeah. be his entire turn. And drawing three and gaining three is not really all that threatening in this spot, it feels like. Well, if, if Robert's able to find Planner Cleansing, then it becomes yeah. very Depending on what yeah. he finds, of course, yes. And here's a Divination, so we're going to go two cards deeper. It really does feel like we're getting to the point where it's cleansing your bust here. Well, at least, he, at least he has outs. Yes. That's one way to look at it. It's one heck of an out. There's a land. It's an island. So, again, no third white source here for Robert just yet. Two 
Two mana looks like he's reaching for. Could be a last breath, and it is to take care of the voice. Last breath's so good in this matchup. It's, it's been, I mean, Adam's drawn a lot of voices, mm -hmm. and the last breaths have been excellent. Snook gonna draw here. You have to imagine that Johnny has to go looking at cards instead of counters, I think. I think that's the route that if I was in Snook's position, I would want to go. I just have to get deeper into my deck. I'm just not so thrilled about it, but I think that's what you might have to do. It just depends if you feel like you can win this game going long. Two, three, and four. Miscutter Hydra's a pretty nice find. That is, the presence of Miscutter Hydra is a really strong argument for just upping Ajani when mm -hmm. you have this much mana. I think if this is a game one scenario, it may be correct for him to just put a bunch of tokens on the Soldier Pantheon, but Miscutter Hydra definitely changes the equation. It's time for a 6-6 six, six. with haste and protection from blue. And everybody's coming in. Protect for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 with Robert at 15. Does have a Mutavolt back to block with, but the inability to cast Azorius Charm right now looks like it may be relevant. Last Breath could be cast in Soldier of the Pantheon, but that's not all that exciting. And, you know, I think that we would have seen Last Breath from Robert last turn because of the way that he's been playing the game. Mm -hmm. I'm with you now. I think it might be Planner Cleansing or Bust. I think we're in that. I think we're in that spot. Well, now, you know, Sphinx's Revelation is off the table next turn. Robert can't cast it and survive. Nope. So that's one big out gone. That's got to be your goal when you're playing green white, right? Yeah. To make it so that your opponent can't comfortably cast Sphinx's Revelation. Elspeth still matters potentially. Mm -hmm. Invault's going to trade with the soldier. Nine damage going to come across. Elspeth's still quite good. Yeah. There it is. Right off the top there, three soldier tokens are coming in. There's an island past the turn back. And now the big question is, can Snook force his, force his way through this? And this is part of the reason that you want to leave in Celestine Charm in the matchup. It, it's not great, obviously, but this is a way to break through this because right now it could just be Jump City all day. Yeah. And Snook might be forced to just keep upping as a Johnny to, to look at cards instead of diversifying counters. Well, it's also rough for him to spread the counters now because Ajani's minus power is a factor as well. Yep. That ends up being the big problem here. Just Elspeth's so good. If you have the counters, you can minus it and kill the creatures and leave your soldiers behind. If you don't, I'll just keep chump locking my soldiers until I find what I'm looking for. This would not be a bad spot for Glare here to see also. That's true. Two of those in the sideboard. See, he's already used the Banishing Light. He could find another. Of course, a Johnny can't take Vanishing Light. Four. Fleece main line, a little late to the party. Can play it and make it indestructible. Can go Monstrosity with it if you'd like. Fleece main line is not terrible here. Yeah. It means the next turn he still is, uh, he's at the minimum treading water with Elspeth. He still needs to find something else, but Elspeth won't be profitably making creatures. They'll have three things to be blocking. I think that Snook has another copy of uh, Miscutter Hydra in his hand, so there is there is Fleece Bane. And I think, yeah, you just got to serve in here with these two creatures. They'll both get chump blocked, of course. At least I believe they will. Yep. Well, they damage through. Pass the turn back. A little Snook. Over to Cedar. And now Revelation has turned back on yep. as a very live draw. Funny how things change. Yeah. Just that quickly. Elspeth is worth a lot of cards. Some mana being tapped right away here. Four of it. Feels like a Jace. Not necessarily a bad Supreme Verdict spot. Yeah, it's okay. You know, you get the Supreme Verdict most of Snook's stuff away. He gets the Monstrosity Fleece main line and keep it, of course. And then, El and then you can remake tokens with Elspeth. We're going to take down right away here. Two copies of Temple Enlightenment and Sphinx's Revelation. Snook with a quick split. Rev going to go to Robert's hand. Lands are going to go to the bottom. Now, Robert really only needs to survive one more turn. 
you know, this first rev doesn't feel like it breaks things open. It just pushes the advantage more Robert's way. I think it's going to be the second rev. The problem here is that Adam's in a spot now where plunder cleansing is probably going to be game over. He doesn't really have the resources left over to rebuild. So the Revelation has a lot of disastrous, disastrous cards from Adam's side that Robert can find. As things stand, Robert's treading water. His two planeswalkers are worth Adam's board. Yep. Looks like Snook drew another land. As you mentioned, though, this would be a great spot for Celestia Charm. That window's closing quickly, too. Yeah, he's, he's running out of time. And if Adam's not able to threaten this Jace or kill Robert, then next turn, that's three more looks at Robert to find Planner Cleansing or some other sweeper. Just being a line of a hand. I mean, he just has to keep knocking the wall down here with the attacks. I don't really think he has any choice outside of that. I mean, you know, you can make an argument for going after planeswalkers or what have you, but I mean, nothing's going to get through. Yeah. You know? If Adam is able to connect with anything, it's almost better for him to just be hitting Robert, so. Jesse Newbold. Jesse Newbold, please come to the stage. There's Jesse Newbold, please come to the stage. Anything else to be done? Yep, here are the attacks. We knew these were coming. Triple jump block, I imagine. You see Robert grab those three. Yep, he's going to block with all three really quickly. Just pass the turn back. We know he has a revelation in his hand. The question is, can he get there? Going to cash in Jace. Three cards coming. Supreme Verdict is one. Planes is two. Elixir of Immortality is three. Verdict is probably the most important of the three. I mean, beating a gain five in this spot is going to be hard, too. Yeah. Even Especially if Elixir doesn't do anything else. Yeah, when you can't break through. I mean, again, Verdict will kill Miss Cutter and it'll kill the Elemental Token. It will not kill the Fleece Main Lions. As yes. Snook will go monstrous with the other one in response to Verdict. So there'll be two 4 4 Indestructibles that have Hexproof left behind. The question, if you're Robert, is can I beat two 4 4s? that are destructible and hexproof, and the Ajani. And I think the answer, oddly enough, is yes. Yeah, I think so too. So it looks like Verdict is gonna get cast. You know, this is where a card like, and we've seen this in other green-white decks, like a Johnny, Call of the Pride, is able to steal a game. Oh, yeah. Some people play a one of Rogue's Passage in the deck to be able to actually force through damage. You know, those are the cards you're looking for here. And taking a look at Snook's deck list, no Johnny's this go around. I like a Rogue's Passage quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, again, it's tough to play because the colored mana is so sensitive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just mean in general. I yeah. think it's been underplayed in its time and standard. Yeah. Does some good work in certain spots, and Elspeth's definitely one of those cards. Hey, this just shows the power of Elspeth. And uh, Johnny Mentorfierce has been out there much longer than Elspeth has been. Yeah. And we know who's winning the war. Elspeth's one of those cards where it's often better than your opponent's entire deck. Well, that thing's out there for a couple of turns. It's really tough to come back. But Johnny got to take a look at some cards here. Glare of Heresy is what Slick just went by. That's tough. You know, this is a situation where you wish you could take any card, but you can't. Snook picks up a copy of Loxon on Smiter. Though I will say the advent that Adam has in his hand still gives him a shot of being able to work this game. Trample is very good against Elspeth, so. Trample plus putting those counters on there. That's a way to get it. Here are the attacks. We know that those are going to block. Looks like it'll be time for a smiter. So here this is. So I'm just going to pass the turn back. 
Cedar going to quickly untap. Elspeth going up. Pretty easy turn there from Robert, all things considered. Here's an advent of the worm. Does Robert have the counter spell? It's a good spot for advent. You know, he Adam knows that Robert's trying to revelate this turn. Yep. So anything that taxes his mana is excellent. And if Robert can only revelate this turn, he might just die. Yep. Especially with the ability for that, for the advent to be an 80 mm -hmm. because of, of the Mentor of Heroes counters activation, which we haven't seen. So there is a worm token. It's a new worm. It sure is. Brand new one from our Creature Collection series. I think that new worm wants three plus one plus one counters. Anything to keep Robert off of Revelating. Make him use his mana on something. Can Elspeth sidekick and a Johnny get the job done here? Three counters there. So many dice involved in this game. A couple. Very dice A intensive. couple. We might run out. There's also a miscutter there. Might be a decent time to move in. He might be able to get the job done here. And I think there is an Elspeth in the row. I mean, you're opening yourself up, obviously, to an Elspeth minus. You know that. But if you can get the job done now, that doesn't matter. Yeah. He's not getting a better spot than this. Again, no. It, it, there's a really good chance that all Robert is doing is trying to revelate this turn. So just push. And you have to imagine everything's going to attack here. And you're hoping that your opponent doesn't have a card like a Zorius Charm or you know, whatever. And this is a situation kind of we talked about in game one where Adam kind of slow rolled a little bit with his locks on Smiter. You don't have the liberty to do that. Yeah. You just kind of hope for the best at this point. You hope there's no Azorius Charm, but I, I'm afraid I think I've got some bad news. And yeah, all the creatures are going to rob, and Azorius Charm is going to blow this up pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, that looks bad, but Adam can't really do anything else here. Yeah. He has to win the game as quickly as he possibly can. I mean, that's just playing to win, yeah. in my opinion. A last breath, going to target one of the tokens. So Robert's going to go up to 10. And Robert doing this now because he wants to commit all of his mana next turn to Revelating. Yep. So Just wants to be as mana efficient as possible. And he wants to tap mana for the last breath, so there's that. They're just shortcutting a little bit here. Two players being relatively friendly. Here is three mana. Let's make it four. That's a verdict. That's going to clear away the big boys without Elspeth having to tick down. Again, if these main lions are monstrous, Mutavault's going to take that down a notch. And now Elspeth's going to take up, and here's three soldier tokens. Here's the thing. Tick-tock goes the clock. Yeah, I think in that spot, even sitting inside the clock, I would have preferred to go after, uh, I suppose, he has to keep Adam off the ultimate at this point because Robert may not be able to win in time. Yeah, that's, I think, the, the realistic thing here is if Snook just says, all right, I will gain 100, I can't win, but you can't win in time, and I'll take my draw and get out of here. I think it's very, realis very realistic, excuse me, that we see that. Voice of Research is going to be added to Adam's hand from the Ajani Plus. Because I do not believe that Cedar has... An Aetherling. An Aetherling chasing down 121 life is hard to do anyway. Yeah, he has one copy of Jace Memory Adept. I would be surprised if he brought it in this matchup. Other than that, the only creatures he has to bring in are Fiend Slayer Paladins, yep. which definitely didn't come in yep. here. And Snook is just reloading the board. And this is a pretty safe reload, in my opinion, just simply because Robert cast Supreme Verdict last turn. Yeah. So you have to imagine he doesn't have it. You know one of the cards in the hand is Sphinx's Revelation. And if Robert was willing to last breath his own token last year, last turn, that to me is the loudest indicator possible that all he has going on in his hand now is Sphinx's Revelation. Because yep. he just wants to get his hand up. Yeah. So time has been called in the normal round. We've got five minutes here. And now things are starting to get a little bit sketchy for, for Robert. I mean, he only has, you know, assuming that he wants to revelate this turn, he only has four blockers against six creatures. His life total is high, but not stone cold lock high yep. you know this is johnny's given adam a ton of resources to work with this game see so robert's kind of counting the blockers robert with four soldier tokens mutaval could get a little frisky on a block as well so we could say that there are five blockers available here 
but Snook is actually being able to keep up with cards and making it so that Robert can't rev, but Rob's gonna rev right now. So he's gonna gain four, he's gonna draw four. Of course, he's revving right now because he doesn't want to give Snook an elemental token from Voice of Resurgence. He will play a land. It'll be a hollow fountain tap past the turn back. Cedars at 14, can Snook get through the last points of damage on this turn? It's asking a lot to do, it's all, 14's a lot to ask against four blockers. It's not a small amount. You see still kind of pointing at, okay, what are my biggest creatures? My three four fours. So those are going to get blocked. My next biggest one is my experiment one. So that's going to get blocked. So I'm able to get through four points of damage right now. The question, of course, is does he up a Johnny? And if he does, does he diversify the counters? It looks like he's going to. So now the biggest creatures, and here's a Miss Cutter Hydra. Okay. So Miss Cutter, so what are the small voice, and two, and two fleece mains are the biggest creatures. So four five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's got to remember to evolve that experiment one. So that should be a little bit bigger. Looks like he missed the evolved trigger. So the four largest things here, one, two, three, there are a five, that. Voice, that. And then two fleets, and then the four fours. I mean, he can take the opportunity here to kill Soldier of the Pantheon if he wants to, but I think he's more concerned about just keeping his life total high. Yeah, I agree. So damage that comes right now is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Could be 10 if he didn't miss the Evolve trigger, but that's okay. He clears all these things out of the way, and what I think what Snook is doing right now is he's trying to get his opponent in a situation where you have to minus Elspeth. Yes. And if you minus Elspeth, that's not good enough, because all I lose is my Miscutter Hydro, and I lose my voice, sure, but I get the token. And this is... You know, when Fleece Made Lion got spoiled, there's all this talk about all this work that it would do against Revelation deck. This is the game it's supposed to be. This is the be. game where it's finally happened. Yeah. There's enough, Adam has enough other stuff going on in this game where he's had the opportunity to monstrous these things and it's coming off a lot of outs. Yeah. You know, you can't, no, Planar Cleansing, Supreme Verdict, Detention Sphere, these are no longer options. This is what you drew up for yeah. Fleece Made Lion against the Rev decks. That's how it's supposed to go. Now, we know that's often not the case, but it's clearly working out right now. And we didn't get a good look of what Rob drew off the four cards from Revelation. The only person that knows is the blue-white control player's hand. But it doesn't look like it's great. I mean, he, he might be thinking some things through here, but you know, I felt like if he had a planner cleansing or a Supreme Verdict, he would have been cast by now. And even that may not be necessarily good enough. Correct. Again, Experiment 1 can regenerate. Those loose main lines aren't going anywhere, and Voice of Resurgence will leave behind an elemental token. Three soldiers are going to come in here. But Have you ever seen a green-white deck overpower Elspeth like this? No. Not at all. This is going to be a, this has got to be a Jace for four mana. Only one white mana being tapped. But now, even if he does Jace, because he made his tokens preemptively, now he can't even Supreme Verdict, because he has yeah. no blockers for the Fleece Main line on the way back. I mean, it feels like his plan right now, if he's playing Jace, it's going up. It's not going down. I mean, there's the, the, there's the ability, obviously, for it to go down, but I would be very surprised if it did. And it does go up to five right away. So those gigantic green-white creatures are going to be a little bit smaller. Holofound's going to come in and play tap, and all Cedar can do is pass the turn back here with four mana available. It does represent some things. But this is still not enough to survive this attack, I would imagine. Uh, Ajani can diversify some counters onto the smaller things. Please report to the sales. Yeah, that Soldier of Panther can become a relevant attacker, right. for example. Yeah, we might be in a situation where the smallest thing that Snook is attacking with are those Fleece Bane Lions. Yeah. Yeah, but we're moving up. And of course, you can't put it on, you can't put the counters on Soldier of the Panther right. because protection for multicolored. But you can't put it on just about everything else out there. He puts on Experiment 1. That's a 6-6, six, six, of course, with the ability to regenerate. And then we go yet again. Now, the big question here, too, is the missed evolution trigger for the Mistcutter Hydra when Experiment 1 was in play, will that come back to hurt Snook? That's a point of damage. It may not seem that big, but it could be given in this that, game. Given how, you know, Robert's blocking is getting contorted right now, it may make the difference between, for example, him having to chump block with a mutable and him being able to keep a mutable. Yep. See if Munivald will do any blocking here. You know, the cards you're looking for, a card like Celestial Flare, but then you just sacrifice a creature that got blocked. Yeah, you can just sacrifice, or a Soldier of the Pantheon, that's not worth very much. Yeah, it's not spot. worth much. 
So I think we're going to have Flare before Blocks. That's a good play. But you just sacrifice your smallest creature. There's a voice trigger. So Elemental Token will come in in just a moment. So now that's going to evolve Experiment 1. So good work there by Adam. So there's your Elemental Token that comes in. Now Flare's going to resolve. I have to sacrifice a creature. I have to imagine it, Soldier. Yeah. Yep, and that's going to go away. Smallest creature matters the least. Mute Vault's going to go active. It has the opportunity to block four biggest creatures. You've got Mist Cutter. You've got Experiment 1. Two, three, and four. I think eight points of damage. Oh, six points of damage comes through because of Jace. As long as our electables are correct, and Robert's at five. Yeah. I think we just watched a green-white deck wow. overpower in Elspeth Sun's champion, and Adam Snook is going to win this match over Robert Cedar. Two games to one. Green-white aggro takes it down over Blue Control in the long game. I've